the Egyptian authorities have highlighted strict conditions to allow evacuated Nigerians transit through its territory. The conditions are provision of details and schedule of the aircraft, capacity of the aircraft, pledge that the Nigerian nationals will be conveyed directly to the designated airports once they depart the border, provision of comprehensive list of the evacuees with passport numbers, as well as valid travel documents, such as international passports. Now, other conditions by the Egyptian authorities are presence of Nigerian government officials at the point of evacuation and standby buses that will con immediately convey the evacuees to the airport, among others. Meanwhile, the Nigerian ambassador to Sudan, Safiu Olanio, has earlier blamed the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management and the National Emergency Management Agency for the hiccups been experienced in the evacuation of stranded Nigerians in war-torn Sudan. Arise News Analyst Dayo Shubowale joins us now to discuss this development. Mr. Shubowale, thanks for joining us on Newsday. Welcome to the program. Pleasure here. Well, okay, so what do you make of the evacuation attempt so far and the rather stringent conditions given by Egypt to allow the students, you know, the Nigerians trapped in Sudan, transit through their country? Yeah, I have an ambivalent feeling towards the direct tape that the Egyptians have thrown in the way of evacuation of Nigeria. But I'm not surprised. I will use an analogy for you to read my mind. You know when uh, Russia invaded Ukraine, African students rushing out by discriminated at the border as Africans. A similar thing is what is happening. You see, the Arabs, never thought of themselves as Africans. Otherwise, in a situation like this, we have, we have an embassy, an Egyptian embassy in Nigeria. So it's a matter of phoning them to help make life easier for Nigerians who want to flee war, as it were. They are almost like refugees. But you see, um, it was because of Egypt, uh, okay, it was because of the Israeli-Arab war that the Arabs join the African Union and try to cooperate with Africans and think of themselves as Africans. This sort of thing has highlighted that tension, that racial tension. It is there. Otherwise, why, why, why the red tape? The Nigerians, they are free war. They, are want, they want to go to their country. You see, they must, you, you want to know the aircraft coming in. I see that aircraft is going to invade uh, Egypt. No, it is just uh, red tape. And it is an unfriendly attitude, and I frown at it. And I think the Nigerian government should summon their ambas ambassador here in Nigeria to so offer an explanation why they cannot help us. Uh, okay, but I would like to throw this in. Um, a jurisprudence lawyer, I have once had this talk with a jurisprudence lawyer, and he blames Nigeria weak international relations. And he says that because we are quote unquote, weak in our international relations. That is why the whole Bakasi issue happened. That is why the whole thing with South Africa and xenophobia will always play out. And that is why Egypt would do this. We, I, we've seen Morocco also do this when they when at the height of Ebola, when a nation's cup was to be held, because they know that they can probably step on the tail of the tiger and the tiger will never react. I, Nigeria uh, will I never. Agree, I disagree will with the view of that jurisprudence lawyer. Nigeria has a robust foreign service. That's not, a robust, no, 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 wait. You okay. Know, you see, I mentioned this. But it is not playing out. It is playing out. It is playing out. You cannot do media trial. You get me? We have uh, uh, the permanent secretary. Uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, yes, uh, or C4, and one doctor, uh, one doctor, no, okay, there's a joint committee yeah. between the Ministry of uh, Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and the Foreign Affairs, yeah. But you see, what I see that can be a problem is, is, is not with the effort of people, but this is a diplomatic crisis. But we are dealing with it as if it is a disaster issue. And the, the chairman of the joint panel between the Minister of External Affairs and uh, Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management is, is the humanitarian person. 
You see, it, and he too has run into bottleneck with Egypt, and he has said that they will deal with it through diplomatic channels. Why couldn't we have left it to the foreign affairs? To so that begs the question, when you now say that we have a robust foreign affairs, this shouldn't is, they have been handling it? That, it Instead just, of all this, yeah, the yeah, ambassador other, blaming the foreign affairs. I say affairs. again, you can do, not do media trial. These people are doing their job. You get me now? You must allow them to do their job. It's because they are transparent. They are giving us a step-by-step -step, uh, information on what they are doing. That, that, that transparency should not be rewarded with mischief and misinterpretation. But my own question is this. Um, what is we, your, we call, we call, no, we call is ourselves... Your no, 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 we call, call ourselves yes. the giants of Africa. We but when it comes to international relations, most of Africa, when it comes to dealing with Nigerians, when, when we have red tapes, bottlenecks, they make life difficult for Nigeria and Nigerians. Look, Nigeria... It's a fact. Nigeria brought an end to apartheid in South Africa. Nigeria, but did the South Africans when remember? Nigeria, when Liberia was a failed state, Nigeria led the come up to rescue and bring peace to that country. In fact, we have problems of our own. Yeah, True. but in terms of international relations, I think, no, we have a robust, okay, like this is you on the ground now. I would expect the, the humanitarian affairs people yeah. by now to have allowed the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs to contact the U.S. headquarters in Addis Ababa because they are in the same area or to summon the Nigerian uh, um, uh, the Egyptian ambassador in Nigeria and seek his help and that if, you know, at least they should, if they do, are not willing to help, they should at least not throw so, so, well, they, in um, the works. For example, Ghana. Yeah. We've seen yes. how Nigerians in Ghana have been treated like second-class citizens in Africa here. Mm. First time I will tell you, Liberians do not like Nigerians. Probably, maybe the ones I have uh, they experienced. Are, they are and we are still seeing, we are still going back to the okay. same junction. Yes. You've it's, spoken about South Africa and apartheid and the role we played in apartheid. Yes. But we've seen xenophobia targeted, extreme xenophobia targeted towards Nigerians. Is that diplomacy? That's envy. No Nigerians are successful. We are right there. The in the whole of how does the Nigerian other, government react to all these issues? What do they do to make the lives of Nigerians living in other yeah. countries better? You know, how, what what do they do to minimize all this discrimination that they go through? Okay, let us let us let us look inside as Nigerians. Charity should begin at home. Okay, uh, you know, some Nigerians are involved in some illegal business. And they show off and they attract the envy of the indigenous people. And sooner or later, they deal with them. You cannot blame us for our lifestyle. We are Nigerians. Yeah, you, we are you, flamboyant you, you, people. You, you, we are very uh, colorful oh. people. And so she said, she said, xenophobia, is that our own fault? It's not our own fault. That's envy of people who are envious of successful aliens in their midst. Arise I'm proud to be an idea. Arise, Mr. Analyst, Mr. Dyer. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, the interview is over, over. Ah. because the time is fast spent. But thank you so much for joining us to give us your view, you know, on what's happening in Sudan. <laughs>